Hey guys, just want to do another quick video here and try it in this setting once again. Uh, forgive me, I may be a little bit nervous doing this. It's kind of out of my comfort zone doing videos like this. Uh, I feel like I'm talking to myself, but uh, I'm keeping in mind that this video is going out to those of you that watch, in which I would like to thank you. Thank each and every one of you guys for uh, tuning in. Uh, get a lot of encouraging comments and people tuning in and even some say that uh, has told me that they they get their kids together and their family and, and they kind of consider this ministry their church in which is a total humbling experience, a ho humbling uh, thought and I appreciate those of you that, that do that and uh, I... Uh, will focus to always keep that in memory in mind that you you have your children watching uh, that your family watches that you could be sitting there uh, behind your computer or your TV with your children beside of you and I pray that God will never let any of my videos be any way that would uh, uh, that you would be embarrassed to watch my videos in front of your children or your family or to share them with anyone and uh, I would just, it's, it's just a humbling knowing that you do that. And I appreciate those of you that contact me uh, and tell me that you're watching. Um, thank you. I just want to take that moment just to say thank you for that. Um, today I want to look at a topic I've been getting a lot in the last few weeks on the topic of the two Gospels. I've been getting a lot of emails, been getting a lot of contacts on both sides of the aisle. Uh, a lot of great information, uh, a lot of scriptures. Folks that contact me saying, I, I see it, I see, they, they study it and they see things uh, kind of in the one gospel viewpoint. And I've had a lot of folks share notes with me, articles, other men's teachings, uh, just to help kind of sharpen our swords and same on the other side of the aisle I've, re I've received uh, folks that disagree which is I'm fine that's fine and they've shared with me their notes and their thoughts and and, and theologies on on why they see the two gospel and to be honest what I've been doing I've been taking those that oppose because I've got my own reason why I don't agree or see the two gospel topic um, my thought process and my belief is based upon my own studies but I want to be open to not anything that's not a good good terminology but I want to be I want to be a student I want to be able to learn and uh, this journey started with me several years ago. I've discussed this with uh, several of my friends, and they know I've always had an issue with this, the, king, the, the, the teaching of the outcome of the kingdom, who's a part of it, who's not a part of it. Um, and this two gospel issue. And what I've done, and I want to just do this, I want to take time to... I've got material here that people have sent me their thoughts. This is why. Them telling me why. This is why I believe in the two gospel. This is why I believe this way, Brother Allen. I've had some that contact me, and they're very confrontational, and I'll be honest with you. Once I see that they're confrontational, I'll draw back from them. But then I've got others that's got a good spirit about them. They send me information. They say, please check this out, and they ask me to please look at this. And I have done that. I've looked at the, some of the verses and, and uh, the thought processes. And I want to look at one today uh, that was used to support that there are, that, you know, the two gospel issue is that the apostles, apart from Paul, preached law and works to the Jews to enter into the kingdom. That, that, that message continues even in the age in which we live and into the future ages and that is a part separate from the message that Paul is preaching to the Gentiles that it's 
uh, by grace through faith. And that there's two teachings there going on simultaneously and even into the future ages. And uh, a verse that I'm just going to want to look at today, I want to look at in 1 John chapter number 3. This verse of scripture was used not too long ago. Uh, and I, I want to just kind of isolate it, maybe not take too long. I hope not get too long-winded here. But the verse of Scripture that was quoted to me um, was 1 John chapter 3, verse number 9, that whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his sin remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. This verse of Scripture was used to me, and, and it was attached with a question. Uh, they quoted this verse of scripture and then they said Paul didn't talk like this Paul didn't speak like this this is obviously an example of two different messages because Paul didn't talk like this and I started thinking about it and I thought what do you mean what do you mean like this Paul didn't talk like this what was this person trying to show me in this verse what are they insinuating that this verse of scripture is saying stop and read it he says, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his, sin rem for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now what is the two gospel teaching teaching us? They're teaching that James, Peter, and John, that these men preach to uh, Jews the law and works to enter into the kingdom versus Paul's uh, by grace through faith. And there, and the question was, Paul didn't, and, and the statement was, where did Paul stay, where did Paul talk like this? Paul didn't talk like this. And I started, what does he mean by like this? What is he insinuating that this verses of the scripture are saying? Now I see what he's trying to say, but let's stop and let's just look at this verse of scripture from that point of view for just a moment. This verse is different than what Paul. Let's just look at it that way for a minute. What is he trying to say there? The whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Is he trying to tell me that this verse of scripture is teaching some Jews in the future ages that for you to enter into the kingdom, you can't sin, that if you're born of God, you will not sin? Is that what this verse of Scripture is? Is that what you mean by Paul? Is that what they mean by Paul didn't talk like this? That Paul didn't say phrases like this like don't sin? Because I will agree with that. But my question is, this is where I feel like people are making mistakes whenever they read these verses of Scripture like this. Does this verse of Scripture tell these Jews for you to enter into the kingdom of God, you can't sin? Don't sin. If you're going to be born of God, if you're going to be born of God, and they've also used the terminology again, saying that only Jews were for, like born again. The phrase born again is only used towards the Jews. In which I can say like in, 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 the, in the John... And then uh, I think Peter mentions being born not of corruptible but incorruptible seed. And here we've got John in 1 John talking about those that are born of God. And I, kinda, I understand that there's phrases that only are said to the, like that right there. But then I think back to where Paul made comments that we've been quickened and we've been made alive. Uh, term, I believe that's a terminology issue. That you've got these men that were obviously, and I, I agree that they their 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 ministry was aimed towards the Jews. Their their ministry was aimed towards the Jews, if you will. I'll I'll, I'll go with that. But it's a terminology issue. But that's a side note. Anyway. Is he insinuating that, that whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin? That this verse is telling these people they don't that not to sin? For you to be a born of God. For you to be a child of God. And he goes on, and, he, and, I, and these verses, they're, they're tough to understand. Listen to what he's saying. Verse number se, uh, 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteous is righteous, even as he is righteous. 
He that committeth sin is of the devil. He that committeth sin is of the devil. That's strong words right there. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. That's, that's where it come from. The deception of the devil from the Garden of Eden. He, was, he sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Alright? Now, if John was saying that for you, all right, Jews, this is what the two God, all right, Jews, for you to be born of God, a.k.a. enter the kingdom, you can't sin. People that are born of God does not sin. And if that's what that verse of Scripture is saying, you're right. That's, a, that, that's, that's, that's definitely different than what Paul taught. But one thing that I'm also noticing that if that's what that verse of Scripture is teaching, it's also different from what John himself taught just one chapter before that. Read with me in 1 John chapter number 2, verse number 1 and 2. My little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. Now is he telling, me, telling them, don't sin. Don't sin. And if any man sin... We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, if any man sin. And He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Here John just got through starting chapter 2 all out saying, he's saying these things that I write unto you that you sin not. What John is telling him here, he's not telling us not to sin, because he goes on to say, and if any man sin... We have an advocate with the Father. Not sinning. If them verses of Scripture back in chapter 3 is telling these Jews, for you to be born of God and to enter into the kingdom, you have to not sin. Then I've come to this conclusion. There'll not be one there. <laughs> I mean, there'll not be one there. I mean, if that's what they've got to do to enter in, if that's what this is teaching then if I was a betting man, all my chips are going on the failure of man. All of my chips are going to go over onto they're going to sin. <laughs> I, I will put all my bets over on that one. They've never been able to fulfill that. No one is able to fulfill that. So it, that's obviously not what this verse of Scripture is teaching. All right? Now you might say, well, Brother Allen, if that's not what it's teaching, then what, what is your studies? What are you saying it says? Well, I was told or asked, where does Paul talk like that? Where does Paul talk like that? Does Paul say anything like that? Now maybe does Paul use the same exact terminologies as that right there? But see, I think that's where a lot of this issue is coming from. It's different terminologies, different audiences, different people writing. They're going to say things different. Just like with the example of the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. I remember being in my old church years ago, and I remember that little rinky-dink little Bible co uh, college we had there. I remember a, a, a Bible teacher there spent 20 minutes trying to explain the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven that they're running parallel one with another, that one is the... And, and he, just went, he just went through like 20 minutes worth of explaining why they're, explaining why they're, they're different. Well, I did some studying on the king. I don't see no difference in them. Matter of fact, because the reason I don't see no difference in them is because, if I'm not mistaken, it's Matthew that only uses the terminology, the kingdom of heaven. You'll only find that it's one of the two you'll only find that one terminology in the book of Matthew. He's the only one that said, said it. Everybody else says the kingdom of God. And the reason I know that it's, it's, it's tied to one another and very close, if any different at all, is because there are certain places where you can go and look up where Matthew said the kingdom of heaven and then go in like either Luke, Mark, or John and find the same story, but one of them men said the kingdom of God. So it's a terminology issue. 
All right? Now, did Paul say anything like this? Did Paul talk like this? Turn with me, if you would, to, and I want you, uh, and before we leave there, I want you to notice something in 1 John 3, 4. Look back up there in, in verse 4. He says that whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is transgression of the law. And he just got through saying that, in, in, in ver and then he goes on to verse 9 and says that whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Insinuating this two gospel message that he's telling you don't sin. For you to enter into the kingdom, for you to be born of God, to you to be a, a Jew, to receive these this promise that, that God is holding for your nation only and that, that you can't sin. All right? Turn with me to Romans chapter number 5. Romans chapter number 5 and check and look at this. Romans chapter number 5. Read with me beginning in verse number 13. Paul writes, For the promise that he, Abraham, for the promise that he, Abraham, should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or his seed through the law. It's not given to through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. See, the Jews got it wrong. They were doing it by the righteousness of the law. They thought that, they, see, that's where this two gospel issue, they're making their mistake too. They're keeping it, they're looking at it the same way the Jews looked at it. We're going, we've got this, no, the promise was made through the gift of righteousness, of, of faith. Through Abraham's faith was it given. Alright, for if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. Faith is made void if they're the heirs. If the law it makes you the heir of the kingdom, the rule of the world, like Abraham, and that's where this kingdom originated from. I sent out questions. I got the same response from all of them. The kingdom of God promises started with Abraham. That is the origination of the kingdom age was to Father Abraham. And right here just said that those promises, if it's by the law, makes faith void. And promise, and the promise of none effect. Of none effect. Alright? Because the law worketh wrath. Listen here, here's the verse. Because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Where no law is, there is no transgression. Now, I want us to compare this verse, verse 15 to John chap 1st John chapter 3 verse 9. Now let's look at it. <coughs> John says back in 1st John chapter number 5 or uh, excuse me 3 1st John chapter 3 that whosoever whos, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Paul back in Romans chapter number Four says, because the law, the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Paul teaches us, ladies and gentlemen, that because of Jesus and because of our faith in Jesus, those of us that are, are of faith, that believe the gospel, that we are dead to the law, that the law has no more dominion over you and I. And when there is no law, there is no transgression. So you know what that's saying? What that saying is that because of my faith in Christ, and if you go back and look back in 1 John, he says back there um, in verse number 5, and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. In Christ there is no sin. None. You say, well, Brother Alan, I'm still a, I'm still a sinner. But if you're in Christ, you have been made dead to the law and you are now living unto Christ. And where there is no law, there is no transgression of sin like John said in 1 John. There is no transgression of sin because, the, 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 because he says, for sin is the transgression of the law. 
Sin is the transgression of the law. Now, John goes on to say that those that are born of God doth not commit sin. Those that are born of God. Those believers. John is writing to believers here. And keep this in mind. He's writing to people that are already believers. He's not telling them this. Any, he doesn't say, He that committeth sin is of the devil, and whoever committeth sin, you will not enter the kingdom. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say that. What he's saying, think about it this way, and I've got it broke down like this. In Romans chapter 5, verse number 1 through 8, let me read that right quick. Go back to 1 through 8 in chapter 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace through our faith, okay? By whom also we have access by faith unto this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Let me make sure, yeah. Tribulation, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man uh, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then he goes on to tell us, that, uh, that it's while we were enemies that Christ died for us. All right, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. But then Paul also teaches that if I'm in Christ, I have been made dead to the law, and I am no longer a transgressor of the law. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. What is John saying in 1 John? He's telling new believers, the, hint, the key phrase, my little children, He's telling new believers that if you're a believer, if you're born of God, if you're a believer, you don't commit sin. You don't commit sin. In the eyes of God, I am totally, totally justified. Just if I'd never sinned. That's what, how I've learned what justified means. Justified means just if I'd never sinned. I'm clean. Those that are born of God doth not commit sin. Those that commit sin are of the devil. Just like he told the Pharisees back in the day, you're of, a, of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. They were not believers. He's talking to believers here, and he's telling them that if you're born of God, you don't commit sin. Just like Paul said, where there is no law, there is no transgression. Where there is no law, a.k.a. born of God believers, there is no transgression, a.k.a. doth not commit sin. This is not an example, ladies and gentlemen, of two separate messages. This is an example of terminology issues. This is an example of, 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 of a different approach and one thing that I want to also throw out there, and I've noticed, remember, James and John, John James only one, wrote one book. Peter wrote two. John wrote three. Paul wrote 13. Paul gets more detailed because he received more information about the gospel than any of the other apostles. The other apostles were preaching what they knew. They didn't... And, and in one letter, they didn't write everything they knew in one letter. These men were saying what they needed to say to their audience during that period of time. This is not an example, ladies and gentlemen, of two different Gospels. This is not an example of John, the ba John writing a contradictory message than Paul. John addresses that if you sin, we have an advocate. He's not going to say, if you sin, and then turn right around and one chapter later say, to enter in, to be born of God, you can't sin. 
that's, that's an impossible task for anyone, for any human being during any dispensation, during any age. You are not going to be sinless. But this is just an example of how taking one verse of Scripture and this it can be explained away. Paul did talk like this. Paul did tell me that where there, that if I'm, I'm a child of God, in the eyes of God, I don't commit sin. I am totally justified and clean through the blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am clean because of Him. Not because of me keeping any work. And these are not telling me to do works. This is not telling the Jews to do works. This is telling them their standing. My little children, I'm telling you this. My little children, you that are born of God, you don't commit sin. That's not a suggestion. That is a bona fide statement of fact. If you are born of God, you do not sin. Ta-da! And hopefully I'm going to make some more videos like this. I'm going to take verses and just look at them. And can they be explained away? I believe they can. I believe that they can be explained in a biblical, one gospel explanation. I'm not going to... But thank you for watching. I appreciate you watching. And uh, until the next time, we will see you Wednesday night, November, uh, the 7th of this month, uh, November 7th. We'll be back at 7 o'clock with our live service um, from the Potter's House Fellowship at 7 p.m. that Wednesday night. Appreciate you looking. Appreciate you listening. Thank you for tuning in. We love you. And until next time, God bless each and every one of you.